Hi viewers, welcome back into my studio. My name's Kaylee and I paint wet on wet oil paintings. Today, let's set the scene for a little bit of a moody beach scene, a sunset, waves crashing in, and we'll see what we can get to. I have the liquid white on the canvas. We're ready to go. Let's jump right into it. For the sky today, we're gonna work a little bit in stages. So first thing, we're gonna pick up our one inch brush and go right into our yellow ochre, just tap into the tip of the brush, get a little bit of paint. And I wanna come up to the canvas and just imagine right about where I think the horizon is gonna be. And I'm gonna pick out up in this top section, the top third, and just start it out. I'm using long strokes. It's, it is an X pattern, just a long X pattern helps to get a little bit more texture. Now we're gonna grab some Indian yellow, same brush. Kind of more of a golden color. And when they combine together, they make a real beautiful sunshine color, which is what we're going for. And I'm gonna work that up just a little bit, but not too much further. And while I still have some of the paint on the brush, I'm gonna get just a touch more. And we'll just move a little bit of this down. Into what's gonna be the water. Add a little bit of sunshine into that. Nice, now we're gonna grab some bright red, just tap into a real tiny bit of that on the brush, and some alizarin crimson. And I'm just adding these colors together. I'm not blending them yet. I'm just putting it on the canvas, a little bit above and below of our yellow, the yellows. I'm going to move some of this up a little bit. Grab a little bit of those colors again onto the brush and we'll just kind of cap out a little bit of this yellow in the water. This just helps to create a little bit of a barrier. In the water, it's not as big of a deal if it turns green, but we are going to be using blues. So it's easier to use yellow and blue together in a sky if you separate them. And now by adding it down below, it just creates a little bit more harmony with the entire painting. All right. Next, we're gonna mix up a little bit of a lavender color, still here, right on the brush. We have a lizard crimson, phthalo blue. Just a touch of phthalo blue, it goes real far. Maybe a little bit more. We'll start with that. Now I'm gonna put my palette down so I can hold on to my canvas a little bit here. And I'm gonna kind of move in a little bit more texture into the sky by wiggling the brush and just letting whatever comes off stay there. Don't worry about it. That's what we want. Nice. A little bit more crimson and phthalo blue. I'm going for a darker color now. I'll show you here. A little bit more blue. We're just working layer by layer up in the sky, one color at a time. And then we're gonna come back in and blend it. But we don't have to do it right away. We can kind of work at our own pace. That's why we use the liquid white. We'll pick up a little bit more paint. Phthalo blue, lizard crimson. And we do already have liquid white on the canvas, so it's gonna be blending with that the entire time. That's what we want. All right, I'm just gonna Scrub in this cloud up here. 
and we'll come in, come back and work on that a little bit more later. A little bit up here. And I'm gonna take just whatever paint is kind of left up on my palette here and just throw down some of this color again to create some of that harmony. We'll add more color down here, it's okay, but just to save this paint, and it also helps with cleaning up so you're not wasting paints, just get rid of it on the onto your canvas because you're gonna need it there anyway. So it really helps out, and then you're kind of cleaning out the bristles with the liquid white. So now when you get your rag, you can just wipe off the rest of that extra paint. Ready to go. Still a little bit dirty, but core concept. I have a clean one inch brush. I'm gonna go into the titanium white and grab a little bit of phthalo blue. And we'll just start with that. And we're just using crisscross to work in this blue. And it's okay if we pick up a little bit of that uh, lavender color that we put in. We want that. Just all of these mixture of paints is just adding depth and, and harmony into the painting. So let it work for you so you don't have to try as hard. Now we're gonna add a little bit more blue by going actually to the Prussian blue. Just tap into that. And we're gonna start on this top. A little bit more Prussian blue, I think. I want this bit dark up on the top. And it's still going to blend with that liquid white. Now with that paint on the brush, we'll just work in some more blue into the, these kind of more cloudy areas. This will add a little bit more depth and darkness into the clouds. Just really want to darken them up up here. And then we'll come back and blend a little bit more in a minute. Let's finish off with this blue. We're going to get just a little bit more paint on our brush and throw in some blue onto the bottom. Working our way up, always starting on the outside, moving in. We're just going to throw that up there any which way. Did a little bit more. All the way up. I'm still going to leave just a tiny bit of room here between our uh, bright yellow sky. We're going to blend that out and then we'll work on our horizon line. So let's pick up a two inch brush, nice big blending brush, and we're just going to start right into this bright sunny area and just blend that out to your heart's content. down into the horizon here, and I wanna make this line really soft. So I'm grabbing some liquid white and moving it up. Big crisscross. And I'm letting up on the brush a little bit here and just kind of blending this in my cloud kind of swirling motion. We wanna leave the movement up in there, not mess with it too much, and just lightly blend out this blue up here. Now you'll notice we did do that in a specific order. We started from the yellow and moved up into the blue. The blue is gonna be the strongest color and it's gonna mess all of this real bright, pretty colors that we just put up in here. So now you can see all the blue on my brush. We wouldn't really want to go back into that. So we won't until we need to. 
And we're gonna put in some more clouds, pick up a fan brush, and we're gonna mix up a little bit more of our lavender color, alizarin crimson, phthalo blue, more phthalo blue, pick up some titanium white, more blue, and just a tiny bit of midnight black, a little bit more. Okay, throw up some clouds. Just gonna twirl this around and see what comes off. Now I'm gonna pick up just a little bit more blue. I want this other cloud over here a little bit more blue. I'm gonna pick up some Van Dyke Brown as well. And I'm just gonna Scrub this one in as well. Kind of working in a little bit of layers. Really just to whatever's with that brush, it's fun. Twirl it around and get some good movement up in there. Now I'm gonna Keep with this uh, slightly dirty brush, grab some titanium white, and little yellow ochre. We're gonna put probably just a little bit more yellow ochre, bright red, want this a little bit darker of a color dark sienna, a little more red, there we go. Now we're gonna put in some more clouds down in this area. Now I'm just gonna kind of muddy up that color a little bit here with some of my lavender, just a touch, there we go. Gonna kind of pull out some of the bottoms of here of these clouds we just put in with the fan brush. Kind of makes it look like they're just being like the bottoms of them are being pulled in the wind. And with that same color, that kind of um, orangish, brownish color, a little more Indian or yellow ochre. Let's go ahead and just pop on a few highlights. Okay, just gonna stop with that and pick up my blending brush. And soften her out. Just by using the tip of the brush, we're grabbing the bottom of that highlight and softening it. Lift. A little bit more. There we go. And while I've got this brush, let's just soften up some of the rest of these clouds where you think they need a little bit. When we go in and put the highlights, we don't want there to be too much paint on there so that it still is bright enough. So sometimes you can just kind of move around some of that paint beforehand to help you out. Right, just blending these clouds 
make them a little softer. Lift. And just get those brush strokes out. Okay, we're gonna grab some titanium white into this little bit of our highlight color, grab a little bit of bright red and some liquid white, just a tiny little bit. You wanna thin down this paint just a touch. A little more red, want it a little bit brighter. Gonna add these highlights to the tops of the cloud where the sky is showing through. There's gonna be light. Our sun is somewhere down here, but the light is still kind of pushing out from behind these clouds, and it's going to be illuminating little areas of them. Maybe need a little cloud out in there. I'm just picking up more paint. It's a little bit lighter. And continue pulling out a few highlights on these clouds from the sky, kind of just piercing through and adding a little bit of kind of volume to those clouds. And next, we're going to move down into the lower clouds, pick up some Indian yellow, bright sunshine color with our titanium white. There's, it's still a dirty brush. Let's grab a little bit of liquid white, ran out. Just thin that down a tiny bit, a little bit more Indian yellow and bright red. I want you to be able to see it. There we go. And I'm going to pick out where the sun is. And I'm thinking maybe right about in this area. So let's just go ahead and pick up any old brush and I'm going to pick out with a titanium white and just tap in with this brush. A little bit of titanium white. And then we'll work that out from that area a little bit. That's good enough. Take your blending brush, soften all of that out. We're just going to go all the way across with an X. And with our highlight color of the cloud, we'll touch on the lower section, pick up some more liquid white and your sunshine color. We have Indian yellow and bright red, titanium white, good pop. And we'll go ahead and hit these ones down here as well. all the way out in this area. Just use up whatever you have left. Maybe pick up a little more and touch on some of these. Leave that. Now you can spend as much time or as little time on this as you want at home. I am trying to get a little bit faster at painting. So if it feels like I'm rushing through it, maybe I am not in a bad way. I just want to make these a little bit more digestible for you to be able to watch, um, you know, watch it in, you know, 30 or 40 minutes maybe would be really nice. And then you can just get right into painting and have a little bit less prep time and thought time. You can just get right into it. So that's my goal. We'll see how it goes. I'm just going to kind of move around a little bit of these colors that I have on the brush for a little bit more interest down here on the horizon line. And then we'll pull this flat across, lift our little clouds, and just get those brush strokes out. Now let's come up into 
these other clouds and soften them. I usually find that blending the this way, the way that I'm doing, like blending it up is a little bit harder. So just be patient with yourself and it's okay. Now we're gonna flip the brush over and just soften out the rest of these clouds that we put in just by softening out the bottom, twirling your brush around, make sure you're not always going in the same circular pattern, kind of moving it about and just making a little bit more interest with your brush pattern. We're gonna soften this cloud out And lift that all up and pull out those paint brush strokes. Last, we're going to grab some more titanium white into the fan brush, some bright red, and just a little more pop onto these clouds. And I'm pushing up the fan brush to get that paint to break off of the top. Okay, let's soften those down just a little bit. Lift and get those brush strokes out. Next step, I have a slightly dirty one inch brush with a little bit of blue on it. I just want to add a little bit more blue kind of into this bit of the horizon down here. Just to add like that a uh, little bit of um, that leftover storm that we were talking about down in this area. I'm gonna pick up just a tiny bit of alizarin crimson and it should make a little bit more of like a grayish. Just wanna touch a little bit of that in. And get the rest off down on here. Even it up. I'm doing long straight across strokes on the bottom here. Okay, let's take our uh, palette knife and we are going to mix up a little bit of a dark color we want both of our blues, we have Prussian blue and phthalo blue. Let's grab some of those. Van Dyke brown, midnight black, alizarin crimson. Put that into a pile, a little more Van Dyke brown and more Prussian blue. We're just gonna mix that up onto our palette. I'm gonna put this down and grab a little roll of paint we are going to pick out our horizon. I think it's going to be just right below the sun. Let's call it right there. And I'm going to pick one side. And we're going to measure it out. Just lightly with your brush, any brush, measure from the top down to your line, pick up your marker, okay, 
and that was just a little low so we'll go just a touch above that and we have our horizon line now you just kind of have to connect the dots and hope that it all works if we have to move it up a little bit because our center one is too high that's okay but we really need to have a starting place and we know that our ends are the same or at least they should be Let's double check. Brush to the line. Brush to the line. How easy was that? Yes, tape is easier, but this is a white canvas, so we don't always get to work with those types of tools. And also, this gives you the freedom to be able to move it around if it doesn't work out the first time. So I do like that option. And we're, we are going to just slightly shift this up in a minute. There we go. I'm just scraping straight down attempting to put a mostly straight across line and then we're going to step back and double check that we did that right that's the most important part you want to check with your eyes to see how we did i like it okay now i'm going to clean off this mess of paint that i got all over me and on my knife I'd like to take one of my one inch brushes. It doesn't matter which one you have that's more dirty or whatever, it doesn't quite matter. We're just going to soften out this paint and blend it in so we don't have a big glob of paint there to work with. And I am moving in side to side strokes. Just a, It is a little bit of an X, I'm kind of rocking it. I'll show you down here, I'm making a rocking motion. So I'm doing that up here into this paint. It helps to give that water the motion of water. Just back and forth, little rocks. And we're gonna bring it all up together, nice and softly, moving some of this dark down into our light. Blending. Being sure not to lose all of the dark and all of the light, right? You want to keep the contrast between the two. So the darkest part we want on the horizon all the way up at the top. And then we're going to add some more details. Okay, I'm going to take just a tiny bit of that nice dark blue color we just made it's a really dark very strong blue and we just want to pull out the base of this cloud right here a little bit more it just wasn't saying enough for me Softly. Blend it out. And I'm just going to touch on the bottoms here and kind of soften it up a little bit. Give it some movement. Wipe your brush off. Lift. Very, very, very light. And pull that across lightly. Whisper. 
Good. And we're getting some of those reflecting colors in there. It adds a little bit more oomph, I guess we'll call it. Let us pick up our big brush. Well, this is our one inch brush. We're gonna work with this a little bit more today. And we are going to put in some more dark, just working in that rocking motion, adding in some more ocean water movement. The side two. And just rocking that brush in and allowing that paint to fall off. Always darker on the corners and the edges working in. Next, I want to pick out, just so we can help ourselves plan this out a little bit, we're going to pick out some of the main uh, rolling waves that are coming in. So we have some waves, I'm sure, you know, plenty back here that are kind of rolling in and we can pick those up more. We're going to have one right in here. Let's focus on the top of the wave. And it's going to move across. We can always do more later. Start with that. I'm going to make it darker and thicker on this left side. Getting smaller, still just as dark, but just getting smaller over on this side. We'll get a couple more kind of rolling in, maybe here and maybe here, just some small Okay, now we're gonna just take the that same brush and kind of work and blend this dark color back just a little bit. Do it again on this one. And for this one back here, this wave is kind of more standing up, whereas these waves are rolling in onto the shore. And this one we can see is kind of more upward facing. So we're gonna blend out the bottom. I'm going to start using that rocking motion by just pulling out and giving it a little bit of a rock. Do 
just softening out all the rest of these lines that we put in by just blending out some of the back portion of that dark. And I wanna keep some of the lines to be nice and strong and allow a little bit of softness to take place as well. So just a motion of uh, moving your stroke around and just trying not to always be in one spot, that definitely helps, but you don't have to try super hard to make water movement happen. Um, less is more. You know, just make sure that you're keeping it in line with where you want it to look, to line up. So today we're kind of pulling out of, you know, somewhere way over in this area It was where our um, point that we want to reference. Okay, I'm going to pick up a bigger brush and just blend it, blend this out a little bit more. I'm going to start and soften all of this water. Same in here, just soften it back. If you've got a nice big brush, it blends really, really well. Lots of bristles. Same in here, just soften all of this out. don't really like this line up in here, so I'm going to pull that down and soften it out a little bit. Sometimes you can just push your big brush right up into that top and it's going to pull some of the paint down and also push a tiny bit of it up. It does add a little bit more interest having that horizon line, this dark part here, to be a little bit softer. So I do like to soften up that paint. I'm just getting out some of the dirty paint, some excess, and I'm going to just softly blend this out. I'm gonna lift up the sky and soften the sky. Grab a clean brush, we're kind of mucking it up there. more little cloud over here by picking up some lavender and lightening it up just a little bit <clears throat> and we're gonna put just one more little kind of cloud way down low on the horizon let's soften that up we've got a clean blending brush Really, really soft. Careful here. And straight across. Lift the cloud just a tiny bit. There we go. I want to pull this wave kind of straight down to get a little bit more of that stand-up look on the top. That's nice. And we're going to take our palette knife, clean it off. We're going to put in a little bit of our horizon 
light with Indian yellow and titanium white. Grab that on the knife, a little th thin cut, and pop it in right on the horizon. And I'm gonna move some of that paint down into the water, just moving side by side, applying little bits of that as you go. It's going to pick up paint, move, just let all that happen. Get all that paint off. There we go. Let's pick up a little script liner. Dip right into your titanium white and we're going to mix up a little bit of a bluish white color. Titanium white, liquid white, and phthalo blue. Should be a nice light blue color. And I want to just put in a little bit of interest out, out here, some wave motion. We're just going, doing that same stroke of our wave movement, rocking stroke. Pick up a little more paint. Little bit more and we'll just do a tiny bit out here. Nice. Now I want to pick up the fan brush. Actually, let's use our palette knife. Palette knife, titanium white. And we're going to mix up a lavender light lavender color. With that, let's take off a little roll of paint. And we're just going to put in uh, some little waves out here. I'm just touching the canvas and letting that paint pull off. Now I'm going to wipe it off and on the bottom of this wave, we'll give it a little pull straight down. Now we're going to take the, uh, two inch brush and we're going to blend all the way across just from the outside in really lightly. Now we'll pick up our fan brush and finish putting in some waves. We are just going to use this um, lavender, but with a little bit more blue. So it should be a little bit of a gray color. And we're going to pull this wave back. Right behind it, you'll just give it a little bit of a pull. That gets the foam that's happening kind of right behind the wave. And we'll do a couple more of those down in this to soften this out here. And we're going to add just one more wave right behind that one, just real small back here. Just pull the pull it back.
We are going to pick out a little spot here for our foam on this next wave. Just going to be one of our main waves. So we're going to have some foam. I'm going to just use a rag to wipe off the top of the foam where we want the light spot. I'm just picking new spots on the towel as I wipe it off and finding new sections so that I'm always getting a clean spot so I get this nice lighter color. And over on this other side, we'll do sort of the same thing. Now I'm going to use that rag still and just pull out a tiny bit on the bottom of this foam, kind of in the, in this direction here. Okay. I think I'm gonna put in one more wave just right back here, a small little foam. And to pull that out, we'll just grab a little bit of our dark color. Just shaping these waves a little bit more. Hopefully it'll make it a little bit easier for you. And we'll take our fan brush and that gray color and we're going to just scrub that in to our foamy areas. Pick up some more paint. It's just titanium white and lavender. Same thing, lavender and titanium white. And we will put in some of our foam. You don't have to be too precise. I'm just kind of scrubbing it in. I do want it to pick up the paint that we already have on the canvas and kind of help us out with blending there. So we'll just move a little bit of that around.
going to take more of my dark color and we're just going to round this kind of give this a little bit of a motion here and we'll move some of our color back I just want to give this a little bit more movement Now these are kind of the lines that we're trying to work with, but you know, it's seascapes are still pretty challenging, I think for me. So we're doing it together today. We want it nice and flat over here, kind of building. Give that a good wiggle. Now out here, the water is kind of pulling across this way. And as we move in, we have it moving down this way. Just softening out all those lines. All right. Just had a little snack and I'm back. I want to work in, just get some more of our dark colored paint and we're just going to move in some like the foamy bits in the water where this wave is kind of moving on to the shore here and you can see in between some foam there's going to be light spots and dark spots right so these will be the darker spots out here it's a little bit just kind of softer. Still dark and light. Just a little bit further down this way. And this will just help us that when we put in this Bit, this real dark color, then we'll be able to put lighter colors on top and they'll kind of balance the two out. So I know it looks kind of scary, like you're putting a bunch of dark on, but we are going to come in and just kind of soften these two together, give them some pulls in different direction. And try and just think of the shape now as we're moving back into, this is more of like water flowing onto the shore and it's kind of it is kind of moving in this like downward direction this way right like this and then we're going to move up to where it gets a little bit more flat and then this wave is now moving directly over so it's going to be curling 
and we are going to see just the, the roundness of the top of that wave plus the darkness that is behind it. So just adding in, <clears throat> excuse me, movement, dark, so that we can put in some more lights. And the further away, like we want this part to be really bright, so we need this other stuff to get really dark. So we're just trying to move within our darks and lights to see if we can get somewhere that we're happy with. And just we're thinking about water moving and it's just moving, right? I think that painting oceans are, it's really enjoyable, like thinking about the waves moving and crashing. I, I spend a lot of time when I was a kid at the beach and I really enjoyed those moments. And so when I get to paint, beach, I kind of feel myself back there, although this isn't that beach. Um, it helps to think about what you're painting and get an idea, really think about those waves, what they sound like, you know, if there's birds, which to me, there were always just birds and I always hear just seagulls and pelicans and it just reminds me of being at the beach. And so if you can get yourself, your mindset into that, you'll be able to come up with something, you know, it might not be exactly what you plan, right? I have a sketch over here that I'm trying to, to work off of, but I haven't painted this scene yet. And so it's just, you just work with dark and light. And, and now I'm showing you my step-by-step -step so you can follow along and, and do it the same at home. So these, these uh, oil paints working with a liquid white on the canvas really just gives you this opportunity to move and play around with the paint and not feel really pressured to finish it because you need to blend it out. Um, you just, you can work with it once you understand how to layer the paint. So that's what I'm hoping we'll be able to learn and that I'll be able to show you. So I'm just picking up, you know, I'm showing you what paints I'm using we're not doing anything tricky or fancy. It's just mixing the thick paints with thinner paints and letting the oil paint really do more of the work for you. <clears throat> so out here, we want this to be relatively flat. And then as we move down, we're kind of getting this angle in here. And we're gonna have some Kind of water just on the shoreline here and to really help us out to send this to help your mind understand where we're going with this let's go ahead and put on some brown onto the bottom this is going to be our sandy area let's kind of work up my brown is a little bit more thin than it normally will be um, it just got really warm and settled funny. So I'm just blending this. I'm just adding it a little bit by little bit. Um, we'll grab, grab a little bit more Van Dyke Brown. Excuse me. <clears throat> Ooh, grab a little sip of tea. Better. I'm just going to, I added in a little bit of dark sienna and Van Dyke Brown together on the brush. And these are, these are really thick paints. We're just tapping into it just like we did the sky. And we're just tapping that into the brush, using that to apply this kind of sandy beachy area. I guess I'm gonna go all the way across. All three of these, well, this is, I guess this will be tutorial number four. Um, all of these tutorial style paintings that I've been doing with you, um, they're all first attempt paintings. And I'm generally just working off of kind of an idea of 
color and composition. And so I just want you to keep in mind that we don't really have to play by any rules other than working with these paints and layering the paints the right way. So you can, you have a lot of freedom in this style and um, I just hope that you kind of take that away from what we're doing. Just blending out this sand. We'll still work on more of that later. I think I'm going to pick out a few just darks and lights. We're going to do some Van Dyke Brown and Prussian Blue right here. I'm picking up some of our dark water mixture that we had right in this area, that dark water Van Dyke Brown. And we're going to have some rocks on the beach, so I just want to give us a little bit of an idea so we don't get too ahead of ourselves. Sometimes you get real excited on the water and then forget that there was this whole other bit you were going to do. So I'm going to put these in just to help us out. Give us an idea and we can still move around and change these because we can still blend it out. So let's start with that. There's going to be one more, but Let's pick up the blending brush and just into this sandy area, we're going to push up some more of that brown into the blue. And soften it out. Now we have some ideas of what is kind of going to be going on down in this area. We'll work with our lining this up a little bit. And I want to soften up this water. And just not have as many of these thick bits of paint. I'm working in this rocking motion up here. Pull some of that down. And I really want to kind of blend these two areas not that you won't be able to tell one from the other, but just to really give the softer, this is kind of like the underpainting, you know, we're still gonna put stuff on top, but we just wanna add a little bit more interest into this sand by just blending all these colors together. And it creates harmony and really helps you for later as the painting is drying, um, all of these colors work together. Okay, we're gonna take the script liner brush and into our light blue color. It needs to be a little bit more on the thin side. And we're gonna go right across the top, leaving a gap for that dark And we're going across the top of the dark that we did earlier. Now it's had a little bit to dry and so we're not going to be picking up too much of it. All, all the way out to this side. As I'm moving my brush out, I'm actually just twirling it very slightly. That helps to keep the paint going, but it also keeps it at a finer tip. So when you lay the brush down this way, you're going to get a pretty thick bit of paint. Then you can raise it up and give it a little bit of twirl as you're moving. And it'll help to keep it in a straight line and keep your brush from really flattening out. So you can flatten it out while you're painting too. But if you paint and twirl it as you paint, then you'll be able to keep it in that fine point. 
We're going to do the same thing on this other wave right in front. Just with that color, we're going across the top. A little bit more titanium white. And I do have a little bit more luck because I'm right-handed to move towards the right. But if you're left-handed, you might find it the other way to be easier. Now, as we move out, I just put some more on this edge, kind of giving it a little bit more of a wiggle. Fix this one up over here. There we go. Now, with, actually, we could still just use that brush. We're going to use, do the same thing into the blue. We'll go ahead and pull over a few sections of our wave. Just give us a little bit of an idea of what we're working with. And as we move out this way, they're going to flatten out a little bit more. And that just helps us line it up. Let's grab our fan brush and we're going to go right into the liquid white into our lavender color over here. And we're going to pull out a couple wave over the top bits. Let's start furthest away with the tip of the brush. Just pull it over. Pick up some more paint. We're gonna go all the way across. And you can flip your brush over and use the other side. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and pick up just your big fan brush and just soften this out a little bit. Your big uh, two inch brush. And in that same direction, we're just softening it. We'll do that. We don't need to use the fan brush on this top one. You can just use the big two inch brush and pull that wave over and it'll soften it right up. Okay, now the last bit is we are going to add some highlight onto the foamy bit. But before we do that, I wanna grab just a little bit more of the dark and pull it into the bottom here. Just so it's not like a straight across line underneath that foam. Same thing down here. So you're gonna have, if there's a big foamy wave coming down, there's going to be a shadow. So we need to make sure that we put that in first. A little bit more here. Just kind of work that through. Out to this other side. A 
this is kind of like a pulling motion over here. It should be like the trough. It's going to go up and then around. So this is coming up. Now this is even more of a up. Okay. Let's just clean that brush off. I'm going to kind of blend the bottom of this foam into that color just to give the foam the direction of being on top of this dark. So we're just softening some of that to really bring it together. I think this one's gonna have a bit more of a wave, so we'll put that in. It's crashing this way and <clears throat> little one here too. There we go. Now we're going to take the fan brush and wipe it off. You can use the same dirty fan brush that you've been using. We're going to pick up some titanium white and some of our lavender color with a little bright red. Ooh, that was a lot. Less than that. So we should have a little bit of a pink color. I'm just going to kind of dirty it up just a little bit there. Don't want it too bright. Now let's pick out where our highlights are going to be on this wave. I think it, we're going to start more off in the center here and we'll see how this paint sticks. Looks like we're good. So I'm just tapping and bending the bristles of the fan brush on the corner and pushing up. That's it. Let's pick up some more paint. I just want it a little bit more on the pink side. There we go. Now we're just tapping, making sure to change your brush angle. Now we are working down this way and the wave is going to be layering on top a little bit more. So you want to do layer by layer. There we go. And now just on the top. Perfect. Let's blend the bottom of that out. I'm going to find, I really like the sable brush for this. That one's Dirty. Number two. Okay. Sable brush. Small little blender. It just helps to get it in the right spots and you can really see where the brush is aiming. Soften that. Awesome. A little more here. Just give the brush a swirl, changing up your direction. 
I like to move kind of in this curling direction, um, but you still don't want to like always have it be just exactly the same. It's going to curl and just kind of spin around and crash into itself and rocks. Very unpredictable. Nice. I like that. Next, we're going to just add in a little bit of that same kind of pattern, just a tiny bit on this wave back here. You can just flatten your brush out and tap, and then we'll blend out just a tiny bit on the bottom. Let me bring that together back there. Oh, I really want to bring out the kind of emphasize the sun right here in this area. So I'm going to take some titanium white, thick titanium white, and go into our sunshine color here, which is our Indian yellow, and just grab some Van Dyke brown. We're gonna just put that right in here. This is a nice thick paint. Try not to let it blend too much. We're just applying that little bit there. Wipe off the paint, because you picked up a little blue, and grab a tiny bit more fresh Van Dyke Brown and your yellows. We're gonna put some here. One more time, I think. Ooh. I think I picked up a little lavender there. Whoops. Here. Just gonna add a little more. There we go. think okay I gotta stop now it's gonna be a tiny bit over here too okay all right I'm gonna add some more of this color same out here Just a little bit more reflection out in this area. Okay. Let's take the big two inch brush. We're just going to blend this a little bit out up here. Give that a nice soften. Next, I'm going to take my palette knife, grab some titanium white, go into our thinned down bluish mixture, kind of turn it, you know, grayish, bluish, little marbly. And it does need to be just a little bit thinner. That's why we went into that thin. There we go. Wipe that off. Now we're going to get a little roll of paint.
Now that we have that little roll of paint on our knife, we're just going to line up some rolling waves kind of back in this area. You're pushing a good bit of paint from the knife and you're actually pushing a good, like putting pressure onto that and you're gonna create these lines on um, the back side of the knife as it pulls off. So really push your pressure down and create some just moving waves up in this area. And we're gonna have some more right in here. Real big titanium white, phthalo blue, and a little bit of uh, liquid white. It should be maybe a little bit of lavender in there, kind of a grayish color, grayish blue. And we're gonna just finish off putting in some of these waves. We're working in an angle here. Now I'm just going to get some foam, allow that to fall off the knife however it wants. That's how it should be. Let's grab our two inch brush and very softly we want to pull this, these uh, waves kind of back into the right direction so that we can get the water moving as if it's flowing, right? So let's try it. These should be nice and flat. Blend those out. Let's take a look. Stand back and see what you got. Now I'm going to add in a little bit more with just the brush, kind of get some more movement. some rocking back and forth. And just get that water, not, it all is like generally going in the same direction, but you're still gonna have this movement that is, it's really hard to explain other than that it's just it's water, it moves, right? So just add in that movement and interest and just 
some variety there. And just picking up thick white paint that's a little dirty and just throwing in and grabbing and moving the paint around. A little more right here in this area. Next, we're gonna add in one last bit of good foamy bits right here. All the way across. Just real small. Pick up the filbert brush and we're going to grab our gray mixture. Should be our blues, midnight black, and a little crimson. And I just want to put in a little bit of foam. We'll add a little bit right here just for interest. Pull that down, go across, and then we'll blend this one out. On the top of that other back one, we're gonna grab just a little bit of dark color and just pull over out in the back a little bit of the dark. Same thing in the front. Just rocking motion. I want these waves to just be moving around, rolling into the shore. Soften these out. creating movement and as you can tell I'm definitely changing from my original plan uh, maybe you can't tell but I am so anyway let's just add in a tiny bit of highlight onto the top of this like a little foamy bit here just as the Sun is you know it's definitely going to be kind of hitting on that as it's kind of spraying and splashing we got that bit there. Let's take a blending brush. I'm just blending this in little circles. I really want to soften this one in the front.
Now I'm going to take my little brush that I've been working with and add in a tiny bit of dark, just like we did on some of the other ones. Just a tiny bit on the bottom. Pull it down. Go across. And we'll add just a tiny bit see that this needs just a little bit of work. Grab your palette knife and we'll just put in a water line down here in the bottom. We're just scraping into our same gray color we've been kind of using on and off. Adding in some water lines. Oop, that one went a little crooked, huh? Soften that out a little bit with your knife or with a brush. I'm just using my knife because it's faster. And we'll take a brush and just soften those back. Now I want to like really round these off on this side. Gives kind of a look that it's coming a little bit more at you. Got a little uh, pink in there, I guess. Working with that, that's interesting. Just blend that till it's nice and soft. All right, this next bit here, let's get into it. We're just gonna put some big old rocks on the shore. Van Dyke Brown and dark sienna into the knife. We'll pick up our midnight black and we'll just make this big pile of dark color. I encourage you to spend more time on your water, but I want to move on so we can get into some other bits here. We're going to put in some nice rocks. And I'm just gonna throw in all of the rocks and you can do as many or as few as you want, but these are the ones that I have chosen. They have been chosen. getting lots of paint and really getting these rocks in there. Okay, next let's take our one inch brush that's dirty 
And we'll just pull down a little bit of the bottom of those rocks into what'll be kind of like the reflecting water. And we'll blend that. Just pick up your big brush. We'll highlight those rocks. We've got some titanium white and we'll get our rock color and we're just going to marble that, adding some red to it. Pick some of that up and pick out your highlights. Right, we're gonna call that good enough. And one last bit is we're gonna add in some um, kind of like a, like if you're fishing in this area, there might be. No, I don't want to do that. I want to leave those out. Never mind. Cut this bit. Alright, we need to clean up the water down at the bottom of this rock back here. So we're just going to take this brown that we kind of pulled in and just rock back and forth to create that shadow. And then we'll pick up our filbert brush with some titanium white and thin it down just a little bit. Add some blue into it. And just go around and splash around just a little bit of that titanium white and it'll pull off just a little bit. Now we can take our um, sable brush and blend the bottom of that out a little bit. And we'll add in with the fan brush. We'll thin down some white with our purple a little bit of red, just a little brighter there. And up behind, just some splashes. And then we'll just touch a little bit more up in the front here. And around the rock there will be some turbulence. And you can pull out the bottom in some of your wave directions. Just blend that in there. Okay, we're gonna do some of that similarly to these other ones here. On this rock though, it's the water's kind of rolling in, but it's it's really slow, slow going. So it's just gonna kind of trickle over. We can have a little bit up on this edge and it's going to be very flat. We can take the um, palette knife and scrape off some paint and we'll just touch right at the base.
I want to pick up with the palette knife some titanium white and phthalo blue and we're going to get some more liquid white just blending that into a thin mixture guess I had some more paint on there than I thought grab off little roll let's it needs to be just like medium texture not super thick not super thin that seems a little bit better there we go grab off a roll of that paint and we're going to rock this paint in and around the rocks ah, there we go just touch and kind of pull some water around grab a little more paint Here we'll get some up on the top. And pull some kind of watery, wavy movements down at the bottom. Same thing over here. Oh, touch on the top. And we'll add in a few more. Okay, now I'm going to take the sable brush and we'll clean that off a little bit. We're just going to soften the back of this um, water that we just put in. Just going back and forth, just kind of soften it up a little bit. I'm going to pull this up a little bit there. Now on these rocks, there's going to be some really cool, like grassy stuff growing. So we're gonna get some brown and step green onto our one inch brush. And we'll just tap on the top. A place for our grass. And then we put it on all of these. We just want to put the dark on first. We're just tapping on some grass. Getting your dark on first. Thinking about the shape of your rocks. I'm just gonna do all of these up here real quick. 
really hope you take a little bit more time on yours. But I did have an idea in mind on time today and we're getting close. So let's wrap it up. Green. This is just some grass that's like growing on the rocks. We need to take our fan brush now and we're going to go into a little bit of our sap green in that dirty brush that we had going. And we'll just start with some highlights. We need to thin it down a little bit. And we're going to find the tops of these rocks and pull out this grass. We want to start on the highest point and kind of pull the grass down the rock. Just picking out some areas where the sun is going to be hitting and we want to just with that thin color find the high point and then pull down some grass. Imagine this as being like when the water is here the grass is tall and kind of like flowing in the wind but is or in the in the in the waves of the water. But as soon as the water starts to recede, the grasses just stick to the rock and they're kind of being pulled. So try and think about that. I'm grabbing just some of our sap green on our dirty brush, a little Indian yellow here and there, some, some um, yellow ochre, just pulling out some grass. On the top of the, these rocks. Oops. I'm going to get a little bit of more sap green in that a little tiny bit darker here and just tiny bits to pull some of some more grass down. Right, a little more sap green, a little blue, a little darker over here. Got some more over here. mixing up the colors so you're not always using just the same color and getting some variety. Blues, yellow, and green. Thin that down, make sure we're, we don't want to be like dragging the brush too much. We want it to just pick off up some of the paint as we move it across. so we don't ruin all of our texture. This last one up here. A little bit of blue. We're gonna make this more blue and grab some, just a couple kind of shadowy shadows in here of this other blue, blue green.
All right, and I want to put just a tiny bit up here on this other rock. Add in a little bit of green. Now for the fun part, we're going to take our script liner and grab some liquid white and we're going to go into and make a nice light green mixture. It does need to be pretty thin here. We're going to kind of just pick out, I need that little lighter still. And we'll just pick out some grasses and some big, you know, some more over the top pieces and pull them out up here. Need that a little thinner. We're just going to try and add in just some grass movement right on the tops of the rocks. Where the highlights are gonna sit. Just try and pick out a few, you know, strands of grass and throw them in there. I want to pause just for a second and say thank you for everybody who is still here watching me trying to paint this painting. I've never painted this before. I'm definitely, um, you know, having a few struggles. Um, it's not easy, but I'm, I'm really grateful that you're here following along and supporting my channel and just cheering me on for what I'm doing. So thank you very, very, very much for being here. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about this painting, if you tried it, if you thought it was really hard or easier. I'd love to see pictures that you did if you painted this painting. I'd love to see which, you know, what your creation is. So send those to me, Kaylee at KayleeWarkowski.com. That is my email address, send them away. And let's get right back into it. We're gonna keep adding some grasses just right on to the tops of these rocks. And this helps to just add a little bit of variety because we had, with the fan brush, we just kind of put in one stroke and that's all that was there, right? And we have a bunch of this repeated stroke. So this helps to add just a tiny bit more dimension and variety, makes it feel a little bit more real. And let's just keep moving down on these rocks. Some of those grasses are getting a little more dry, so they're picking themselves up off the rock, but they're mostly still just stuck down there. Now, originally I found a photo, it was like the Baltic Sea, I think, and um, I saw a few that had all these really cool grassy rocks and different types of piers and stuff. So. That was kind of my inspiration for today. I've never been there before, so I don't really know. Um, but I thought it was kind of beautiful and I wanted to share it with you. So let me know what you think. Okay. 
I just want to take a little bit of um, titanium white onto my dirty filbert brush. We're just going to push in just a tiny bit of like water right around the edge of these rocks that are kind of hiding off the back of the frame, the bottom of the frame, just to make them feel like they're getting pulled around with the water still. I'm just going to move around some of these. Now I'm going to add in some big kind of like wooden pillar things. Just go for it. We'll just do a few, they kind of just go off into the water. And we'll just have them stop there. Now I want to take our highlight color that we use for the rock. We have some titanium white and some Van Dyke brown. Just cut off a little roll of that paint and we'll highlight. Oops, we need to fix up this one. I made him, started to scrape him off too much. You're getting it kind of like a rounded look. We'll make this one a little bit taller since it's closer. Now we'll highlight that. We'll pick out where the sun is and get our highlight color. Van Dyke brown, bright red, a little bit of yellow ochre. And we've got some highlight on the top here. And we're just going to call it right here. Now that we've highlighted the bottom, I want to just kind of soften out the edges here and make them a little less harsh. So I cleaned off my knife and then I'm just grabbing a little bit of that paint and wrapping it around. We do need to put a little shadow on that. So we'll take our dark color we have here we were using for our waves, just add in some brown and grab off a little roll of that. Last, we'll add on just a pop of extra sunshine, yellow ochre, bright red, little roll of that, and we're just tapping on the edge. Our highlight color. I'm gonna wipe off my knife and pull some of that around. It's nice and thick so we can just touch right into that paint and wrap it right around. A little bit of movement there. Now I want to take some of that highlight color again onto just the kind of the end of the knife and wrap around on the top. I 
and some of the brighter color on this side. Those we need to add some grass to, some like kind of moss really more. Just add in a little bit of greens, just some dark green right up on the top and then down on the side. Tap it in just a little green and blue and brown. Tap in a little bit of moss just on the back side. I'm just picking up more paint when it's when I need to and tapping in tiny bits of moss and algae or whatever I don't know what's growing on them all the things and we're going to grab a tiny bit of our highlight color just on that same dirty fan brush and kind of tap on just a couple little highlights around the edges where it might be getting danced with some light just barely. I'm gonna put a little up on this rock. And we're gonna clean up the bottom of those posts in the water. Let's grab just your palette knife and some of our dirty gray water that we created and grab a little roll of paint on the edge of the knife and just clean up the bottoms that need to be cleaned up. And now we'll take our script liner, a little bit of liquid white and a light grass color, and just throw in some grasses over the front of this other one over here. I want to take the filbert brush with a little bit of titanium white on it and we're just going to lift up a little bit of water up onto that pillar that's in the water just a tiny bit. All right to finish off this painting we're going to grab some titanium white and some yellow ochre onto the brush, a little bit of Indian yellow. We want a nice sunshine color here. Thick, thick paint. And I'm just going to pull off a little bit of this sunshine color into a few areas. I'm just touching and moving a little bit, letting some of that thick paint pull off. I think we'll put just a tiny bit more right up in here. Grab your palette knife, just add in a few more 
little wavy water lines down here. Kind of pull some of this around. Oh, big nice white thick paint and the sable brush just soften that make it look a little more splashy I'm going to take my script liner brush with some blue and liquid white on the script liner and we'll just add in a few little water lines. up in here get some water I'm gonna add some birds and then sign this baby. We're done. I'm just grabbing kind of a grayish color. You don't have to add birds. I just like adding birds. Thin that down. And we'll put a few out in the background. to thin the paint even more. When you're painting birds, you really want the paint to flow, so make sure that it's nice and thin.
Okay. Then sign it. Thin down your paint. I have bright red. That's the color I always use to sign. Unless for some reason I'm out of it, which would be crazy, but anyway. Nice thin, like it's gonna run down the canvas. See that? Or the palette. We'll sign it. Well, what do you think? Did you paint along? Do you just like it? I'd love to hear what you think. I know uh, for me, it definitely did not go at all as planned, but I still really like it. So thank you for joining me for this little adventure on the canvas, wet on wet, single sitting oil painting. My name is Kaylee and thank you for being in my studio. Please be sure to hit the like button below Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear what you think about this painting and the rest of my channel. I have a lot of new videos up in the last couple weeks, so go ahead and give those all a watch for me and a thumbs up. All of that really helps me in my channel. Thank you so much for being here with me. Smile and be happy, friends.